<laughs> yeah, baby, what's going on, man? Look, everybody, it's Frank the UPS guy. Frank, say say something nice to everybody. Uh, what do you want here? Just say, uh, yeah, hey, the best. Oh, the that's, best. that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> Frank, the UPS guy. Man, that's a nice guy. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Mowers. That's right, I'm from my van. And uh, this morning, it's around uh, 9.30, I'm still in bed, just screwing around, you know? And uh, I got a text from Frank, the UPS guy. Snowblower. And I don't know why Quinn didn't text me. It's parked right behind it. Craftsman, electric start, 827. Cool. I guess they don't think it's gonna uh, ever snow again either, huh? Yeah, I'm back. Quinn just drove by again. I said, what is wrong with you, man? You're parked right behind the thing. I got to get a notification from uh, Frank, the UPS guy. Were you blind or something? He's like, I'm a little absent-minded today. That's right. Snowblower and push mower, all courtesy of tips from Frank the UPS guy. Man, that's a nice guy, huh? He's contributed to tons of equipment that I've had. You see how things go? Yesterday I did a video about the four wheel steering in action, right? Rodimus Prime, that's pretty cool. But uh, that's only because I only have smalls left to fix, you know? Uh, just when I get low on things to do, two things pop up and now I'm overwhelmed again. And I can't even really work on any of these things today because I gotta go see my mom today and mow her lawn all day, you know? Not only that, it's another hot one too. So here we have two machines, both completely free, picked up within the past three days. This one this morning, this one two days ago. All courtesy of my friend Frank, the UPS guy. That's right, he drives around all day on his route, sees anything interesting, texts me, I get it, get in my van, boom, 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 boom! That's right, boom! Anyway, I'm a little suspect about this one, I'll tell you why. Because Quinn told me that the address where I got the snowblower from, the kid who lives there, he's like 20 years old, he asks Quinn, Hey, if you see any lawnmowers, can you can you tell me about it? I'll go get it. So apparently he fixes things too. So if a guy like that fixes things too, why would he throw out seemingly a complete snowblower? You know what I mean? So the snowblower is suspect. Maybe a connecting rod is busted, but he didn't want to go through any trouble of dismantling the thing and using and selling the parts on eBay like I do. But to me, man, this is money all day long. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a 524 or something. It's decent. Eight horsepower 27. It's not like it's a Chinese engine too. It's a Briggs and Stratton. Probably made in a Briggs and Stratton factory in China, but nevertheless, still a Briggs. Not like a power no more, you know? And here we have the MTD yard machines. 21 horsepower, 550EX. I do like the 550EX because it's an auto choke. As you guys know, it was missing the cover and air filter. I ordered both from eBay. On the cover, I ordered it on Tuesday, got it Wednesday afternoon. 
18 hours after I pressed the button, the doorbell rings. It was almost like instantaneous delivery, and all I paid was $5.57. The guy who sold me the cover obviously just wants feedback for eBay because he certainly isn't making any money. He's actually losing money, for sure. Unless he's got like bulk shipping rates or something like that. Uh, either way, there's Earl all over the place, around the cover, uh, air filter base. It's got funky gas. The lid looks okay. Got plenty of oil in it. What do you think? Should we just give her a couple of booms? Just to see? Just a couple of booms. Ooh, this feels good. about five of these exact mowers this year. They all cut very well, you know, for an MTD product. But uh, this seems to just run just fine. The RPM seems to be a little low. All you need to do is bend that bar a little bit. That pulls the spring on the throttle lever a little bit more tension, and then it'll be at normal RPMs. But the RPM seems to be um, kind of slow. We're gonna see. <laughs> it's Quinn the mailman. He's a little absent-minded today, fellas. Uh, did, did you get that uh, snowblower that parked for All right. days in front of my truck? Thanks for the tip, <laughs> Quinn. Sons of bitches. <laughs> Let's check this out. No, not that I saw it already. Oh, no. Not that you saw it already, no. There ain't no gas, see? It's on choke. It feels good. Primer bulb seems to work too. Like I said, Quinn told me, the guy that I got, um, the house that I got this from, he fixes stuff. So it's a little suspect why he would give away a complete snowblower without making an attempt to try to fix it, you know what I mean? Anyway, I'm gonna check the Earl, get some gas. We're gonna try to start this up today. Look at the dipstick on the, look at the Earl on the dipstick. It's got like a white hue. You know what that means, right? A white hue usually means water in the crankcase. The dipstick was very loose on it. And ready? Check this out. The uh, electric start cable or the stator wire is not attached. It's on, on, and watch this. That's right. It is seized. It won't move at all. So, I could do one of two things. Remove the recoil starter and try to get a breaker bar onto the crankshaft nut and try to turn it that way. Or I could take this cover off over here, see? Ooh. In the storage compartment, it comes with two, well, it's not new, but I guess spare shear pins. Scores! I could take this cover off, see? Use my hand to try to turn it. It might be easier if I, or more, it might work better if I did that. You know, so we know the we know the lawnmower works. But I'll tell you what. Let me adjust the uh, RPMs. Got to adjust the RPMs before I can say this one works. Know what I mean? So let's just tighten up that tension spring. Let's remove these three five sixteenths screws that are on the top that hold this cover together. 
Here is the auto choke mechanism, the thermostat from the muffler, and over here is the spring that tightens the tension. And I actually didn't have to remove that. All I have to do is lift it on this side here and I could actually see it. See the bar. I'm just using my thumb and pushing the bar backwards to tighten the tension. That's it. Eh, I guess it didn't hurt to take that off just to see, you know. But let me put this back again. That little bending ought to increase the RPM slightly. If it's, if it's too much, just bring it right back. You guys remember what it sounded like before? Let's try it now. oil from the uh, air filter base like I said I ordered a couple of uh, filters for this 550 EX type uh, engine uh, it was two for six dollars and 78 cents on eBay plus tax it was like 745 or something like that anyway so uh, filters are on the way as you know I got this for five dollars and 57 cents overnight shipping can you believe it man it was like I pressed the button to buy and ding dong door rings. OEM Briggs too. How does the guy make any money selling them for $5.57 and then providing overnight shipping? Wipe down the oil a little bit. It's got some rust areas bubbling up. I'm not going to grind the whole thing and repaint it again. I'm just going to sell it as is with the bagger. Should fetch me about a hundred bucks. It's an auto choke. Very easy to use. Fail handle. Pull, starts, runs, mows very well. I've had like, like I said, five just this year. You know, um, you can buy this uh, at uh, Home Depot or Walmart for about a hundred and sixty-five dollars. Um, a little bit more for the bagger if you wanted it, but it's about that price. So less than a hundred bucks to get a good push mower with a bagger. It's a good deal. So if I could get a hundred bucks out of something that you could get for. Uh, $175 brand new. That's finding uh, it's finding money on the street. You know what I mean? So, um, why do people throw away perfectly good machines? Could be an assortment of all kinds of reasons. Maybe they're moving and they don't want it anymore, or uh, they got a lance. They paid a landscaper now and they don't need it. It's been sitting in their garage the whole time or outside because there's rust, right? Uh, or maybe that this cover was off. You know, and they're like, oh man, it's broken. Throw it out, you know? Who knows? But uh, good for me, right? That snowblower is gonna take a little bit to get going. Um, I'll see if I can take the cover off and see if we can unseize the engine. So I've got the snowblower inside. It's just too hot to be outside. Decided that I'm not going to take the, this recoil starter off to try to unseize it because they're torque screws, it just is too much trouble. Here's a 3 8 to take that side off. I'm just gonna take the cover off so 
the pulleys and the shafts are exposed. Maybe I can put a socket on there and just turn the crankshaft. You know, these covers, this covers are like $25 on eBay. And by the way, I just sold my quantum gas tank for $33. Okay. So I'm going to get these channel locks. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. How about that? Super easy, man. These, these, this uh, rusty dust is spewing out of the uh, muffler. That's not a good sign. Really feel much compression. Here. Just gonna put a little bit of gas in here before I uh, decide I'm gonna try to take this cowling off and get access to the carburetor so I can spray some go go juice in there. It's on, like I said, this wire is still disconnected. I can't find the other end, it's probably sucked in somewhere, you know. While the primer bulb seems to work, I don't feel any liquid going in there. Actually, maybe now I can hear some bubbling in the gas tank. Let's give it a pull. Ooh. run and see. Let's put the middle. And it feels like it's very easy to pull. Like there's no compression. Very, very easy to pull here. I have a feeling something's uh, something's up. It's more compression when you put it on choke. So I've been pulling it. Didn't work. Guess I'm going to take this cover off pretty easy to unseize that uh, unseize the engine huh I'm glad it turns the problem now is it seems to turn too easy this knob just comes right off this is the uh, key for the kill or to keep the magneto on I'm just disconnect it It's wet here. Let me blow some go go juice in there. Some brake parts cleaner. Seems like the timing's off. Could be the valves. See that? We're getting spark for sure, but the timing is off. Maybe it's a shared keyway, huh? What do you think of that? Saw that fire over here? Yep. Something's up the valves. 
this one's going to need a lot more attention than just troubleshooting. So I took the spark plug out and I stuck a screwdriver in here just to hold it, hold the thing and as you can see, piston is connected. So the piston is moving, it's not a blown connecting rod. We know that it, it, ignition coil does work. Okay. There we go. Ignition coil does work, but the timing is off or the valves are um, the valves aren't right or not closing completely. Um, having water in the crankcase is an indication that water got in there could cause a lot of uh, rust buildup and corrosion that would prevent the valves from seating properly which is why it's probably um, not closing or opening right and also uh, the, the, the uh, key could be sheared too so unfortunately I might have to take this whole thing apart and get to the flywheel and uh, see if we can get this going. Unfortunately today, I don't have that kind of time. Uh, I'll start removing this stuff and see how far I get, but uh, I have to go see my mom later. So uh, tomorrow, I guess I'm gonna tear this whole engine apart and see if we can get it running. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's brief episode. Picked two things up in the past couple of days due to Frank the UPS guy. That MTD push mower works just fine. Adjusted the RPMs a little bit, but we got a bigger pickle ahead of us. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Because the UPS guy screwed this up. I'm gonna see you next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you next time on Mowers and Blowers.